Where's my left ear? Where is my left ear? I don't even know where my left ear is. I don't know where my left ear is, but my right ear's here. I don't know. What was that? <laughs> I was trying to catch you. Didn't get me. Didn't. Wasn't. Got to be quicker than that. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Listen to Lamb Chop podcast. It is Gavin and Cody, and we are here again to discuss another great topic. I don't know. We'll leave that up to you if it's great or not, but another topic today, um, we're just going to, you know, I'm going to leave it as a surprise till we get there, but in the meantime, what a, what's been going on, Cody? How's your week been, bud? It's been good. Uh, not bad. Work. And then just kind of relax this weekend. Didn't nice. do too much. It's always good. Oh, yeah. Anything crazy happened this week to you or anything? Uh, I mean, crazy? Those no. my knuckles. Sorry. I went and <laughs> Nothing bought, crazy? No, I went and bought my Christmas gift to myself this year. Already? Yeah. Well, no, well, for last year. Oh, okay. That, was, that makes a little yeah, bit more sense, so, I guess. I well, what, what, you want to share that or no? I mean, do you want me to share it? I don't care. What is it? Bought a Colt 1911. Oh, fancy, huh? Yeah. What you going to do with it? What? Shoot it. You going to shoot it? <laughs> you going to look at it? Mostly look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a collector's item. It's from the Civil War. No, that was, that, no, no, no. No, it's not. No, it's not. Sorry. But I did, sh- but I did shoot my Navy Colt today. As well. Is that from the Civil War? That was from the Civil War. Really? Yes. And you shot it? I mean, and that particular gun was not made. It's a replica. In 1851, but right, it's a replica right. of, of one a day. 1851 Navy Colt revolver. It's still pretty awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Pretty cool. Well, I had something crazy happen to me this week, and it wasn't like fun crazy or awesome crazy. It was more of like a why did this happen to me type crazy? Uh, Lucas had to have a really bad temper or something? No, no, nothing like that. This okay. was <laughs> like specifically happened to me. For you, okay. Basically, Monday at work, I had had some boxes stacked up on a table, and uh, one on, I actually put this, like, I was being dumb, and I put the heavy one up top, turned around, turned back around, and out of the corner of my eye, I see him start to tumble over. I, like, like just spin around so fast like so fast dude like boom catch it and then I caught I caught one with one hand and then I went down and grabbed another one that was about a little I don't know 10 to 12 pounds grabbed it midair kind of shifted my weight weird and was like that was awesome I caught both boxes by the handles so you had a spider-man moment yeah dude exactly yes that's exactly what I was gonna say I had like so spidey sense and everything like one of those, you, you ever you're like, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those moments where it's like, you you just moved like a superhero. Yeah, and uh-huh. then a lot of times, most of the time, no one's there to see it. You start looking around like, no, did yeah, anyone yeah. else see that? That was awesome. That was awesome. I cannot believe my body moved like that. So, needless to say, I woke up the next morning and my muscles were like, huh, yeah. You are not a superhero, though. Your body moved like one, but you are not one, and we're here to remind you. So from Tuesday all the way up until this morning, and even now, it's still sore, but like this morning, I still could barely bend over. It was hard to walk, breathe deep, laughed. It hurt real bad. Was your back? Yes, my back. I threw my back out. Something to my... Somebody told me... Somebody said I pinched my, sci- my sciatic nerve, but I think I just pulled a muscle because... I, I don't know. I don't know which one it was, but it hurt really bad, dude. And, like, it's just like I'm seven days from 30. I'm seven days from 30, dude. And I'm, that's not old, but I feel like I'm in my 50s or something. 50s or 60s. Oh, I got a whole nother year. I got <laughs> I gotta brush up on my cardio, bro. And get, get back in shape, but... You can come work with me for a month. Yeah. Do cardio every day. Yeah, I need to do like heavy, heavy cardio, like some sprints though. Well, I mean, carrying a hundred pound package of, you know, sixteen steps is kind of a workout. That's, that's pretty good. Sure, every day you should just work for a moving company. Why well, you got to do deliveries? I pretty much do. We deliver so many couches and tables and 
bed frames and dog houses and Lions, chicken houses. tigers and bears. Oh my. Oh my. So, speaking of like superhero stuff, like, dude, that always happens though. Like, I've heard so many people have those superhero moments where it's like, dude, my spidey sense is tingling. I just moved like the speed of like a like a speeding bullet, and, and then hey, your body has that, to pay for it. Speaking of that, you, uh, you know how how uh, people will will talk about something, or or I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, but, people talk. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they can. They talk about stuff. <laughs> but no, like people saying or somebody saying. You just felt somebody watching you. Have you ever experienced that? I've um, never, I've never felt that. I don't know. I mean, I guess out of the corner of my eye, I could, I could well, like sense somebody. that somebody uh, well, might be looking at me or something. But you have no clue that anybody's there. You don't see nobody. You don't hear nobody. But you have a feeling you're being watched. Uh, no, most of the time mine is like reasonable. Like I'm like, I think someone's watching me. I turn around, someone's watching me, or someone's looking at me, like waiting on me. For something, mm. so like that's most of the time with me. But yeah, I mean, I guess like I mean, you talking about like you, are you feeling like a presence or something? No, or are you just talking just, about it. I'm just talking about it. No, no. weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, most of the time, my, well, you like, talked about superhero, you know, reflexes or whatever. I know. I got you. I got you. So what I really want to know, though, and just you bear with me here, I want to know: Is there any time in your life? Have you ever been like, uh, what would you consider any point in your life uh, in a good way that could have been like a superhero origin story for you personally? Like what happened to you or did you do in like a moment that you were like, oh my gosh, if I was a superhero, this would be my like, I'm a superhero now moment. What would be your origin story? Oh God, you know not to ask me these kind of questions. No, 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 no. You gotta just, just think about it for a second, and then answer it. It might be a long second. Okay. Uh, well, what about? Okay, maybe this one's easier me, for help you. Help me. Help me. Well, I'm not gonna help you. I don't know your life, but well, that's not what I'm saying. I'm like. Okay. So okay, let's just flip it on this then. What about a, a super villain origin story? Anything dark happened to your life or in your life or any? moment where you were just so mad that that could have been the breaking point to turn you into a supervillain? <laughs> Come on, bro. We're uh, on a podcast here. You so gotta have answers. I know that I had a mental breakdown uh, when I was working at Longhorn. And uh, I, I, I... I feel like that'll do it to you. I lost it. Yeah. I, I lost it pretty good. And I quit and said some choice words to certain people and uh and I I don't know just in the you know from that one moment since it's I've kind of I don't know the restaurant industry is not for me anymore not for <laughs> you I feel you so that could have been that could have been your breaking point to turn you into a super villain probably so or any, at least against that restaurant any superhero moment? Mm. I, don't, I, I can't think of anything. Okay. Well, Maybe I just am a villain at heart. I got, I got two. I got, I got one of each then. So my superhero moment probably be... Um, oh, uh, you know what? You haven't had one yet. And I'll tell you why. You haven't had a superhero moment yet because you're not a dad yet. Mm. Once you become a dad... You'll have those moments all the time, but like more notably, like, so one that I could tell you, like the other day, my son was asking me to get him something, a snack, and it was on top of the fridge, and he was sitting there reaching for it, reaching for it, almost trying to climb up the front of the fridge, which is just impossible. It's too smooth. There's not enough steps. There's one step where the freezer door is, but like, that's it. He can't get to it. He grabs my finger, walks up. I look at it. I'm like, I know exactly what he wants. I reach up there. I grab it. And he's just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, I'm going to tell my grandma, my grandpa. I'm going to tell mom. I'm going to tell all my friends at daycare that you are tall enough and strong enough to reach that bag of marshmallows that I wanted, Dad. And that, that joy in their eyes when you do something like that and like just knowing that they... It's mainly when you do stuff for them that they know they can't do yet. Mm -hmm. They just look at you and like, 
like you're Superman. And like that feels like it. I'd be like, I am a superhero. I, I am, am Superman. I am super dad. So I feel like those moments for sure yeah. could be like a superhero origin story or something like that. It's a very cheesy one, but like that's what makes me feel like mostly a superhero. At least in his eyes. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I felt the same way about my dad growing up too at certain points. So uh, now I want to turn to the dark side here talk about my super villain origin story and this was almost for real bro this is almost for real and I'm talking about new a new Christian bro I was a new I was a baby Christian and what I mean by that is this was like Christmas Eve when I was like seven eight years old I uh, just got baptized Christmas Eve day and that was also the Christmas Eve that I realized that Santa Claus was not real. And if there's any children listening to this right now, Santa is real. He is real. <laughs> but it was when I realized that it possibly was not. And um, I woke up that next morning, I was being a grouch, bro. I was being a Grinch at Christmas morning. And my parents were like, Gavin, get over here. You're going to ruin Christmas for your cousins. You better get over here. What is wrong with you? And I looked at them and I was like, nothing. I just am upset and they take me into my room mom and dad are both there and they say Gavin what's going on and I was like I heard dad last night I heard dad and I saw my uncles they were all putting up all the Santa toys in the living room for all of us and dad said ha 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 ho 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 Santa's come tonight and I knew Santa wasn't real anymore and they looked at me and they said son Santa's not real, and we're, you know, we're sorry that you had to find out this way. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys are Christians, and you lied to me? Bro, pulled the ultimate Christian guilt, guilt trip card on him, straight up, like new Christian. Did you really? Straight up, bro, straight up. That's exactly what I told my parents. I said, you were Christians, and you lied to me? <laughs> like, it broke my heart, bro, and like, like crushed me at the core because I was like bro I just y'all had just talked to me about it dad had a long conversation with me about baptism and everything and becoming a Christian what that looks like and you guys are liars like you're lying to me about Santa Claus uh uh so that could have been right there my pivotal moment that could have turned me to the dark side bro oh, man. Darth Darth Gavin well I, I mean at least you were actually told that Santa wasn't real I still haven't been told Cody uh, put out cookies Christmas Eve. <laughs> and some yeah. carrots for the reindeer, yeah, too. carrots and hay and uh, all that. He had, it, all. he had it going on. And you know what? I showed up at his house and I, I ate some of it so he would still believe. The cookies or the carrots? I had a little bit of both. I had some carrot cookies. It was pretty good. Those were good. Thanks for setting those out, bro. <laughs> Carol, carrot cake cookies? God. Cake is so good. I love some carrot cake. Dude, Publix has a great carrot cake. I'm going to throw that out there. Tomorrow? Possibly. We might yeah. be able to. Um, so, let's just go ahead and go dive right into this. Do you have a favorite superhero or supervillain? Just out of curiosity now, since we've been talking about them for the first 10 minutes of this podcast. Favorite superhero? Oh, I love coffee, boy. <laughs> Um, I mean, I wasn't a DC guy. What? Uh, you like Batman, nah, Superman? I was Marvel. Green Arrow? No, oh, get out of here. Green Arrow is like the equivalent of Hawkeye. Yeah, but better, so not equal. <laughs> Either way, they're both garbage. Whoa, <laughs> that was a terrible <laughs> statement. Because uh, even I like Hawkeye too. I like but Dude. If you um, like Legolas from, from Lord of the Rings, you like I Hawkeye. Like a, I was a, a, a airborne guy. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, I guess the just typical Spider-Man, but... Um, Spider-Man! I just got finished watching that. Well, you well, did. I didn't. I, I didn't. Um, but my favorite villain? I don't know, man. That's a good one. That's a good, good 
I would venture to say for me, it would probably be, um, ooh, man, that's a, it is a tough question. Mine, I, I would probably have to go into DC and go with the Joker. The Joker is pretty, pretty awesome, but I would, I, I would like to say one that's kind of, kind of a villain, kind of not, the Red Hood from Batman. Well, he was a hero and then a villain and then, and then kind of good what again. He wanted to do. But he was still pretty awesome. It's a cool character. Wasn't it like the first Robin? Yeah, it was like the OG Robin. I'm pretty sure. I'm know, or sure. the second Robin. Yeah, maybe it was. I, you know what? I'm not sure. I just thought he was really cool. Well, you're the DC guy. You should know. Yeah, well, I have to dive in more, okay? I'm still, I'm still learning and doing research, okay? I'm not like a genius. Come on. You know that, right? No, you're always a genius. Thank you so much. That you're makes me feel so, so good. Man. Makes me feel good about myself a little bit. Um, all right. So, I, also, with the superhero stuff and Marvel specifically, um, there was a new. Supposedly, I read, was reading an article that my uncle sent me, and it said something about the X Men Immortal X comic book. This is pretty controversial and I really am upset about it. Um, it depicts Jesus Christ as a mutant, not of God, but using his powers from being a mutant um, and not from the Holy Spirit, not related to God at all, just that he was a mutant and he's a character in their comic book series. Wait, that, that's, that's the comics or a show they're, they're doing? Uh, I think it's a comic book. It might be a show. I'm pretty sure it's a comic book. It's an issue that they like released and I don't know man I'm pretty upset about it though because that I'm pretty sure if we look at it it's kind of like committing the unforgivable sin because which is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that's Matthew 12 31 so I'm gonna check that out real quick um, and so I tell you every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. So, they were pretty much slandering, uh, saying that the Holy Spirit wasn't of Jesus Christ and not of God and that he was a mutant, and they're putting that in there, and kids are supposed to be reading this, and I think that's pretty awful. I don't know what you think. But I think that's pretty it's pretty slanderous and it's definitely blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. I um, mean, yeah, comics are made up and everything. I understand but that. But that's going too far. It's crossing lines. Right, right, right. And I agree. Um, I just feel like Marvel probably has ran out of ideas. And they, I mean, probably, but they they, they could have done stuff like that, bro. With. I mean, Harry Potter didn't put a character in their movies and say that that was Jesus Christ and that he was a great wizard. That's like the equivalent of what they're trying to do here, and that's just, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I don't think it's cool. Well, I don't think it's cool at all. <laughs> Who's your favorite X Men though? Let's just talk about that for a second. Uh, Throw that in there. Wolverine. If oh I, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hmm. You had to do a top, what, three or five? I guess top three. Top three. I don't know a lot of them, but I do know a lot of them, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense or uh, not. Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Gambit. Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Gambit. I was about to say Wolverine, Gambit. <sighs> Nightcrawler is pretty cool, especially in the movie they did. Yeah. He, that, guy, that guy killed it, bro. Um, <sighs> man. I'm not sure who my third one would be. Cyclops. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Jean Grey. Storm. Beast. Iceman is pretty cool. Beast is pretty cool. Colossus. Uh, yeah. Who's the metal guy? Colossus. That's Colossus. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty cool, dude. I guess. He's pretty all right. He's cool. Um. So, what about music, though? I mean, music. You know, don't you need some music in your life? Don't you like music? I think everybody loves music. Everybody does love music. Um, so basically, I use music in my YouTube videos, and I'm probably going to end up implementing some music 
on this podcast eventually too, like a little intro, little intro tune or something, exit tune, something like that. We need to like maybe explore that. Are you gonna sing for us? I'll sing something. I don't know. Then it might be a copyright because you know I don't know. No. <laughs> But if you want some good copyright-free music where all the, that legal stuff is taken care of for you, all you have to do is, is pay a monthly you know, subscription. But if you want to try it out for any kind of projects where you might need some music, all you have to do is go to epidemicsound.com. You get a 30-day free trial. You can cancel it any time that you want to. But uh, you know, you add music to your content creations, get full access to over 35,000 tracks and 90,000 sound effects. All the rights are included, guys. So I'm gonna have a link in the show notes down there for you if you wanna go and check out that 30-day free trial. Um, I would give it a try and give it a shot because there are some cool tracks on there. I use them in my YouTube videos. If you wanna go check those out at Gavin Lamb TV on YouTube, you can check out what kind of music I use. Uh, 90% of it's from Epidemic Sound. It's all copyright free music. You can use just instrumental or with vocals, whatever you want to do. So go check out epidemicsound.com. Use the link in my show notes and get that 30 day free trial if you want to give that a shot. Also, let's just go ahead and dive right into the Chop Chat. Chop Chat, right? Chop Chat. Um, today's topic is basically some of the best Christian and faith-based films and books, in our opinion. So, Cody, you got a list, bro? So, do you want me to start with, list? like, my favorite of all time, or no? Yeah, man, man, just name some stuff, because, dude, I had a list, and I don't have it sitting here now, and I'm kind of... So, my favorite of all time kinda messed up, is man. a classic. You've seen it. We've all seen it. Everyone's seen it. The Passion of the Christ. No. <laughs> Although that is a really good one. The Joseph, the Coat of Many Colors. The yeah. animated one. Okay. Now you go ahead. I'll give you a hint. Charles Heston. No, I have no idea, bro. The Ten Commandments. Oh. I love that. I may have seen that a long, long, long time ago. That's probably my most favorite movie of all time. Really? Yes, I love that movie. It's a bold statement. Favorite movie of all time? Of all time. It's a wow. good movie. That's a, that's a bold statement, bro. It's good. Bold statement. Dude, I saw one recently. It was called American Underdog. It was actually the Kurt Warner story. Mm -hmm. NFL, pro NFL quarterback Kurt Warner goes through his life story, but there were it was pretty faith-based, actually. He had a lot of stuff about faith in there, and at the end uh, gave all glory to God for everything, which was pretty cool. There's not a lot of people out there, especially in his position, that would do that anymore. So uh, that was pretty cool. Loved that one. Um, there was Will Backey. He's from Texas. I think he went to Baylor University. He did some films with, I think, Riot Studios or something like that. And it was One Nation Under God and Beware of Christians. It was two faith-based Christian documentaries. One, they toured the perimeter of the United States asking people about Christianity and Jesus. Pretty cool. The other one, they actually went and did a tour of Europe and kind of doing the same thing. Um, very cool films. I recommend you go check those out. Also, um, probably one of the best depictions of the life of Jesus through the gospel so far to show called The Chosen. If you haven't heard of it, at least, I feel like you're living under a rock. Um, so well produced and directed and it's one of the biggest like crowdfunded film projects I think in the world. It's pretty cool. Well I feel like their like whole what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. <laughs> like getting the word out. What's oh yeah, yeah like their whole media like or like uh marketing and everything. Yeah, their whole marketing thing is lacking because I didn't well, I didn't hear this show until you told me. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of it is word of mouth, but I think, you know, it's kind of like your targeted low, low marketing, budget, too. Right? Well, I mean, I mean, it's crowdfunded, so, yeah. I mean, all the people are, if they have a system called Pay It Forward, and you can go on there and pay it forward, and that just makes it to where other people around the world can view it and watch it for free. Well, I got one. What you so, got? So, uh, one that I watched, uh, uh, I guess it came out when I was in high school. And I didn't really know that it was a Christian film until recently, but... Hold on, hold on. 
He recorded? No. Alright, on to another movie. Cody, you, you said you got one? Yeah, I got one. Uh, there was one that um, came out, I think when I was in high school. Um, I didn't know it was a, a, like a actual Christian film until recently. But um, I always knew that it had Christian values in it. Uh, but uh, it's called To Save a Life. Have you ever heard of that? I think I have heard of it. It's really good. It's about a young... Uh, young kid who uh, gets a scholarship to go to Louisville to play basketball. He has his girlfriend, he gets her pregnant, she wants to have an abortion, and he started going to church and stuff like that. It was, it was really good. That's good. Yeah. I just, I, dude, I love the sport ones. Like Forever Strong, that was like a rugby one with Sean Astin in it. Mm -hmm. I think that was really good. Um, what was Run the, the Race? Yeah, it was produced by Tim Tebow. That was a really okay. good faith-based film. Uh, Facing the Giants. Facing the Giants. Yep, that was a classic one. Um, gosh, what was that, dude? We saw one. We watched one last weekend called uh, Small Group: The Movie. That was good. That was funny. It was kind of like <laughs> a. It started off kind of like a satire, kind of making fun of the whole small group thing. But then it was basically these people. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing, but basically. The gist of it is these people go in undercover to try to expose the hypocrisy of the Christian church and, and everything, but they end up uh, kind of seeing the truth, which is that God is love, and they kind of embrace everything, and it ends up being something they legitimately start to follow and, and be a part of and do life with these people. Right. It's pretty good. Uh, I would definitely go check that out. It was a really good movie called uh, Small Group the Movie. Um, just fun, fun little fact here about uh, Christian films. And Christian films get a bad rap, and and I think it's basically because a lot of times they're low budget. A lot of actors and actresses um, don't want to categorize themselves under that genre. What so a they theory on that? What is that? So I feel like, and I actually heard this in a podcast hit here at a race. Hollywood's going to black, black, blackball them if they do it? No, 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 no. Uh, so the problem with, with Christian films is that they, which, which there's nothing wrong with it, but it's all about the message, right? Right, right, right. It's all about, you know, pushing through the message, you know, for, for you know, you know but the problem is, is there's they are so focused on that that the acting, for you know, most parts is not grade A, right? The right. Production yeah, isn't budget. grade A. It's all low budget, but it's all about which which there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I really don't know of like a big production Christian film except for maybe Passion of the Christ. So here are the. 10 highest grossing Christian movies. Um, you got God's Not Dead. He surely alive. No, no, no. That was <laughs> that's stuff. That wasn't it. Here are <laughs> Alright, let's restart this. Here are the 10 highest grossing Christian movies. Number 10, The Star. It was an animated movie. $40 million. You got Soul Surfer. Came in at $43 million. The Shack, $57 million. Son of God, $59 million. God's Not Dead, $60 million. Miracles from Heaven, $61 million. I haven't heard of something. War Room, $67 million. That was a really good one. I Can Only Imagine, $83 million. I still haven't watched that one yet. I haven't seen it all the way through. Um, Heaven is for Real, $91 million. That was that story about that little boy, that pastor's son that like was doing some kind of surgery, almost died, and then said that he went to heaven for a while. Mm. Um, and then number one, The Passion of the Christ, $370 million. Is that a Catholic church supported, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they, went out, they went out of the theater for that one, boy. No, it was really good. It was actually a really good film. It was film. really good. And I didn't mind reading subtitles a little while. 
<laughs> was it the whole time? Yeah, the whole time. Really? I think it was actual Hebrew. I don't remember that. Yeah. Well, wow. Wow! That's pretty cool, though. So, also, moving into books, Cody, you got any spiritual books, uh, faith-based books or anything that kind of back up, like, biblical? Uh, the Bible. That's the, you know, that's a really good one. That's a really good one. That's probably the main one. It's the one you need the most, which we have right here. Holy Bible. Yes, absolutely. Probably the, uh, definitely, I would say this is definitely the top grossing one of all the books, uh, for sure. Um, I use the, what what version do you usually read? I just, I just stick with King James. Like, just King James or the new King James? King James. Well, no wonder you don't understand anything. <laughs> Can't hardly read that Joker. I can't hardly read. That's true too, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I use the New International Version. Um, I also have used the English Standard Version, and I do like the King James Version, but I like the New King James just because it's a lot more readable. Um, but whatever reason, like whatever version of the Bible that you prefer, um, that you can read the most and get the Living Word in you and that's what the one that you like to read that's the bible in the version that you should use definitely right right the one that you're going to read the most of and the one that you are comfortable reading that's the one you need to use to get the living word and get your daily bread that's what i truly believe um some other notable books um i actually know this guy his name is timothy j smith he's an author um he has uh, pearlsoflife.net is their website and everything. They do a lot of ministry through that. And he's got this book called Anger, Be Angry, Sin Not. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, has a lot of stuff in there. He actually signed oh, it for me it. and everything. So this guy's... Well, let me see that. He's a pretty, pretty neat guy. And he's a, you know, a nice God-fearing author. To my friend. To my friend. And yeah. Bro. Bro? To my friend and brother. Brother. See, I can't read. Tim. We also have uh, the War Room Bible Study here, which we just read that that was one of the highest grossing films in the Christian movie industry. And this is the Bible study for it. So um, I think Darby and I have gone through it before, and we probably could go through it again because it's awesome. Uh, also, I have a copy of the new King James Bible here. It's called the Evidence Bible because it has a commentary by Ray Comfort in it. And he's also a very notable um, Christian author that I would recommend getting any of his stuff. And I actually have one of his books here called Faith is for Weak People. And that's obviously, uh, it's in quotations because it's supposed to be people like an unbeliever saying that faith is for weak people. But the whole book is responding to the top 20 objections to the gospel and how to defend your faith upon that. So, pretty cool. Uh, I think we need more tools like that as Christians for sure. Um, but you also can just turn to scripture for that as well. Uh, I got a book here that I got in college. I got it. I didn't go to Tacoa Falls, but Cody lived up there. Yeah. And uh, my cousins went there. And when I went to go visit them one time, I visited their bookstore there. And I got this book from Michael DeMarco. It's called Devotions for the God Guy, a 365-day journey. Um, and there's also, this is the devotion book, but he also just has a God Guy book as well. And I believe his wife does a God Girl, something like that. But they're pretty awesome. I would definitely check those out. They're the DeMarcos, Michael DeMarco. Uh, you don't have any books, Cody. No recommendations. That I did not read. But I do have a copy of that. Do you? I do, actually. I gotta you have a find copy it. Of this. Yeah. Crazy, crazy Love, Love by Francis Chan. Yeah. Well, I have something but, crazy for but, you. Then. But he did another, or he had another book, right? Yeah, he has, he has lots of books. He has one that's called Letters to the Church. No, there's no one yet. Um, he's got a lot. There's another one I had. Well, dude, if you have this one, and I have this one, I have not read this full thing yet. I started it, but I haven't finished it, and I'm still towards the beginning. Mm -hmm. I would love to go through this with you as the Bible study. Okay. It would be really fun. And I actually have Right Now Media on my phone through Foundation, and there's a whole video study that goes along with Crazy Love on there as well that we could be able, like we could watch on the TV while we do the study. Okay. 
So that'd be fun, man. I'm Let's do that. I'm down for that. Look, we just we just we just formed a Bible study right now. How cool is that? So uh, yeah, this is Crazy Love by Francis Chan. If you've never heard of Francis Chan, he was um, he was actually a mega church preacher, and he left all that behind to disciple and chase the real meaning of the gospel. Um, and he'll tell you about all those stories and his books and Bible studies and all that. He has a lot of great stuff. And this was uh, Overwhelmed by a Relentless God. Francis Chan uh, it's got actually got a foreword in here by Chris Tomlin. So if you like worship music from Chris Tomlin, you can go check that out too. Um, I got three more books here. One is called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. And if you don't know anything about this, it was actually made into a movie a couple years back. And this is actually the special movie edition of the book, but it said he was a journalist, and the top says, solving the biggest mystery of all time. Basically, he was a journalist, and his wife um, started to go to church and became a believer, and he was like, you know what? This stuff is all shenanigans. That faith is completely a lie, and I'm going to prove it to you as a journalist. I'm going to do this. And he went through a very thorough investigation and got so much evidence and at the end of the whole story could not deny the existence and the proof of Jesus Christ being the, the Messiah and the Lord and Savior. So he went from atheist to a Christian uh, all while trying to disprove everything. So it's actually a really good book if you want to dig into that. Also a good movie too, so it's a double Double whammy right there. Um, then two that I have been uh, most recently reading was uh, a pastor, Kevin DeYoung's Just Do Something. I think I've mentioned this on the podcast before. It's a liberating approach to finding God's will. How to make a decision without dreams, visions, fleeces, impressions, open doors, random Bible verses, casting lots, liver shivers, and writing in the sky. Um, yeah. He said that this need it like counsels Christians to settle down, make choices, and do hard work of seeing those choices through. Um, just do something, you know. And I love the ending line of this book. I just want to read it to you real quick. It says, "The end of the matter is this: live for God, obey the Scriptures, think of others before yourself, be holy, love Jesus, and as you do these things, do whatever else you like with whom you like." wherever you like, and you'll be walking in the will of God. And it's just that simple, guys. I thought uh, it is a liberating approach to finding God's will in your life. Also, specifically, most like specifically for husbands and dads and people that are soon to be husbands and dads, I think that even Cody could read this book and get a lot out of it. It's called Dad Tired and Loving It, and it's from a guy named Jared Lopes. Um, he's got a Dad Tired Podcast, so whoop, shout out to another podcast out there. Um, basically, uh, Stumbling Your Way to Spiritual Leadership, a book that can quite possibly change your life forever. Um, it says, if you are a man seeking to fall more in love with Jesus and help your family do the same, this book is for you. You want to be a spiritual leader? Start here. Realize that their story isn't the story. It's all about Jesus. Point their wives, children, community, and the world towards God. Stumble their way through spiritual leadership rather than doing nothing. Seek humility rather than striving for perfection. Refuse to let their sin and shame stop them from leading their family. Look for adventure in the kingdom of God, not in the world, and create gospel-centered memories with their wives and children. So, this is exactly where I am in life right now, guys. I'm trying to be a spiritual leader in my household and um, start with Jesus in the lead. So... This book is a pretty cool guide, um, and it just proves that Jesus and, and God is still using people for his kingdom because these awesome Christian authors are putting out a lot of material that really help people and coincide with scripture. So uh, I say go to the Christian bookstore or go to Amazon and order some of these. I got some of these for $10, $12, $7. I think the most expensive one was probably like $18. So. You can get some Christian books, faith-based books out there that will help you through this wild, wild life that we live through or live in. So, I think you should start reading more, Cody. I'll try. I think we should start with uh, Francis Chan's Crazy Love, huh? I'm down. Let's do it, bro. Let's do it. 
Um, so, let's see here. Uh, what are your favorite Christian authors? Or, or like what you said earlier, maybe not completely Christian authors, but people that write stuff related to, like, stories that are faith-based. Like C.S. Lewis. Well, I was about to say, I mean, I, I can't really think of anybody off the uh, top of my head, but you always hear C.S. Lewis. You know, a lot of people give J.K. Rowling a bad, um, they say that they give, she gives them bad vibes with the whole witch and warlock stuff, but I've heard that she's actually a Christian, and that she's, like, based a lot of that stuff off of, like, the good and evil in Harry Potter was based off of her faith. And I know those are obviously not Christian movies, but, like, there's a chance, because, I mean, there was the whole thing of the resurrection stone and stuff like that, and good prevailing over evil and everything. I mean, where she got that from somewhere. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, possibly, I mean. I don't know, I mean, I would, I would have to do more research. I just heard word of mouth people say she's actually, she doesn't believe in all that witchcraft stuff. Those are just stories, that fictional stories well, that she created, yeah. but she's I mean, actually. most people don't. I mean, most people don't believe in witchcraft, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. Some people are pretty well. I mean, some people can mystic be and stuff, and believe in witchcraft and crystals and all that evil stuff. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> them evil people, dude. Them evil doers, bro. Um, you know what? If you're one of those people, we still love you, and we're gonna pray for you. <laughs> we we want we want we want to have a conversation with you. Actually, we want to we want to give you hugs. You just leave your crystals at home. Awkward. <laughs> yeah, leave your crystals at home. Unless they're really pretty. I guess we can we can look at them. I don't know. Um, <laughs> some of my other favorite Christian authors, uh, I got, we already talked about Francis Chan, Kevin DeYoung, Ray Comfort, Lee Strobel, Jared Lopes, um, C.S. Lewis. You got any others? None that I can think of. I was more of a movie Paul, guy. Paul the Apostle, who wrote the majority of the New Testament. <laughs> yeah, love love him too. Love me some Paul the Apostle, you know what I mean? I like Luke. I like Luke. I like Luke a lot. Alright guys, so uh, I just wanted to read some of the scripture to you right now. We're going to start at 1 John. You know where that is, Cody? Where 1 John is? 1 John? Yeah, 1 John. It's in, in the Bible. Testament. Yeah, it's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. So that is 1 John 2 6. All right. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. We're also going to take a look at 1 Peter. 1 Peter 2 21. Okay. And that says, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So. I say those two verses and reference those two verses to say, HWLF, guys, what would Jesus do? WWJD, HWLF, what would Jesus do? He would love first. Um, I'm an ambassador for He Would Love First. So if you go to hewouldlovefirst.com, you can get 10% off your purchase by using code all caps GLTV. If you're watching this, I'll put it on the screen. Um, yeah, all caps GLTV, 10% off your purchase. You can go get some swag. You can get some shirts, some hats, some bracelets. And above all, guys, it's just a great conversation starter. You can uh, get some of that gear, some, get some bracelets, get a pack of bracelets, and you're able to share those with your fan, or with your friends. I don't know if you have fans. Share them with your fans, your friends, your family. Um, and just also, if you're just ever at a gas station pumping gas and you feel led to go give that stranger at the next pump uh, HWLF bracelet, it's a great conversation starter to be like, hey, uh, what would Jesus do? He would love first. This is an HWLF bracelet, and I just really want you to have it. And, you know, if you get rejected and they don't want it, then that's fine. That's all good. But if they do want it, you started a conversation with them, they could change their life, and that's pretty awesome. And also, it's just a great way to share the gospel. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Cody, you got any final thoughts on any kind of movies or books or the way that Christian movies and books are portrayed in our culture and society and everything to close us up on? Uh, like the way they're portrayed, I would say, I don't know, they're kind of... 
They hated on them. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess so. I mean... They're, no one, no one's ever really truly really excited to be like, oh yeah, right. that new Christian film's coming out Friday. Let's go. They all want to right. go see the the new action packed or horror film or something like that. But now the church community is hyped up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, some of them, some of them are. But, well, some yeah. of them might be too. But in I tune think that goes world. back to you know what I was saying earlier, from what I've heard, uh, you know, somebody's opinion was that they, you know, it's all about the the message. But the problem is, is a lot of, you know, secular people, you know, don't really care too much about the message. They just want blood, guts, and action, and that's all they really care about. Or at least, right. you know, for entertainment. Well, maybe we should do another podcast on maybe what what is proper for Christians to watch on TV and what kind of music should we be listening to as opposed like, to... Like, is secular music and TV okay? Yeah. Maybe we should do that whole whole episode on that. Yeah, we could. Looks like we got our next episode planned out, folks. Um, yeah, those are good questions to think about. We want y'all to go down and interact with this and leave comments. Also, I want you to go and leave us a review. You can be honest about it, but we would prefer a five star if you, if you like it. We would prefer a five star on Google, Spotify, Anchor, any of those, Apple. Go ahead and go leave us a review, and also leave us a comment on the uh, YouTube channel. So if you don't know already, I have a YouTube channel at Gavin Lamb TV, and we also have the Listen to Lamb Chop podcast playlist on there, and we also have the Chop Chat clips on there, which are little clips, some of the best moments from our podcast are also placed on there as well. So go check it out, see, see if you like it, and if you rather watch the podcast, then you have the ability to do that. So... Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. We're going to wrap this podcast up tonight, and we will see you next week. And until then, guys, much love. Faith moves mountains. Peace out.